we're back looking at the basic setup for the triple layer load and uh, there, there are a couple of key points to this that make this uh, make it real important that we follow those key points otherwise this load does not go together very well. First and foremost is that uh, w the total length of your line gets totally connected. So as you look down this hose line we have 200 foot of, of uh, hose total. We have 100 foot of 2 inch with 100 foot of inch and 3 quarter. They're two different colors and we're utilizing those two different colors and two different sizes just to show how this load comes together. So you can see the distinct difference as we load it and where the where the hose falls um, for those of you that aren't familiar with it so we've taken this 200 feet we've connected the entire length the entire 200 feet and and what happens is we're going to create three distinct sections a loop and you, you end up with a loop and a nozzle here and the, the hose coming off the bed and a loop back at the vehicle one thing that's that is real important to remember is uh, as you set this up, it typically works best if this nozzle is just slightly uh, back from the, 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 uh, bend, the first bend in the hose. And the reason for that is as we load this line, this nozzle will tend to creep up. And so ideally when it's loaded or when it's finished, to, finished you have this nozzle in the first loop uh, even so that as I, as I come up and I dress this as the, as the nozzleman, I grab the nozzle and the loop and I walk away from the truck completely deploying all 200 feet of the load. In, in setting, setting up the triple load, you saw how the nozzle and the loop at the opposite end, uh, how the, it gets real important that those are, are then that nozzle is set up slightly back from, from that initial loop. And the way that's accomplished is you put a firefighter here at the tailboard, a firefighter at the nozzle in the first bend, and you just real, you just simply, you give, you give a little, you take a little on the top and bottom until you have uh, those bends where you want them. That nozzle being right back, just back from the first loop, what ends up happening is you even that up as, as we load it into the hose bed. As you look at the hose bed side of things, in this case we have a short section or pigtail I like to call it, uh, which helps to bring the load out away from the vehicle a little bit. Um, it also makes it a little bit more flexible for us when we go to, to change hose out, change the load uh, after fire or, or whatever. So as we set this up back here, we're going to take that loop and we want all the hose to be in the same plane. So at every coupling, we don't want uh, bends or turns in the hose because what that does is that gets magnified over the distance of the line. So we have a nice, <clears throat> nice, neat loop here. We're gonna, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hose and we're gonna stack it, one, one piece on top of the other on top of the other, and then we're gonna load this as a single unit in, in a back and forth configuration, starting at the bottom and ending obviously with the nozzle and a loop at the top. <clears throat> okay, when it comes to finishing the triple load, a lot of times people want to take that this loop and open that that pistol grip or the, or the bale, excuse me, and uh, feed that loop through the through the bale, the nozzle, like such, and clamp it down in an effort to try to keep the 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 hose together as a nice solid package. It does make it a nice package, but the problem with that is is if that nozzleman, as he stretches towards the door, if he doesn't pull that loop out of that hose and that hose line gets charged within that bale. Now we have a hose line that ends up ultimately open the bale usually halfway and it creates a very effective hose clamp. So we can't pull it out and shutting it down takes a lot of time to deploy. So it becomes a real safety issue. So I would recommend that you don't do this. Uh, too, often, too many times you get into a situation where you, you, uh, that nozzleman gets in a hurry or they're looking at the building and they're not, not paying attention to what's going on with the nozzle and that hose line gets charged. It, you know, it doesn't take anything for a pump operator to, to do a, 
you know, pull it too, pull that lever too quick and charge that line, and now we have an ineffective hose line that we can't use. And now we got to take the time to come back, redeploy, readdress our hose situation.